there we are. Now I see them as well. Great, perfect. So hello everyone and uh, welcome to our joint conference. I'm happy to see so many of you here. And it, it's really good that um, with the situation this year, we were able still to give a, uh, to, to bring everybody together. And what I would like to tell you in the next about half an hour is an overview of the Document Foundation itself, how it's set up, how it's working, what the ideas behind it are, what the bodies are, a bit of insight into our daily work. And um, yeah, for questions, uh, feel free to use the chat or we should have a bit of time also afterwards. Then let's, let's start, let's see if this is working here. Is it not? So fantastic. There we are. Okay. So just a couple of words on myself. I'm uh, in the, the that whole field for like, I think 16 years in the meantime, I always say I was not gray when I started. So I, I started um, with uh, back then open office org around uh, the, the end of my school term. Then I was active in the project. I was um, from the very beginning with the Document Foundation. I was one of the founding members, was in the first board. Nowadays I'm executive director. And should I have a bit of a spare time, I'm also active in infrastructure and marketing, but really just a little bit. We have great people doing the job here. So I've, I've been around for quite a while, uh, saw the project growing and uh, changing, and uh, would like to give you some overview on what the, the, the last years have brought us. So on the starting slide, you saw the big LibreOffice logo, and on the bottom, you saw the Document Foundation. And I'd like to explain a bit the meaning of these terms. They sound rather clear, but maybe there is some interesting detail that you didn't know. So first of all, um, LibreOffice has some sort of double meaning. Of course, and I don't have to explain it in this round, LibreOffice is a software that you can use. It's the leading free office productivity suite that is installed by millions of users worldwide. The concrete numbers is really challenging to get as we don't sell a license, but I know that Mike and Italo are doing a wonderful job to find the numbers out. But let's stick with millions of users worldwide. That is definitely not inaccurate. So it's widely used. It's one of the most prominent open source projects in the meantime. But LibreOffice also describes the community behind that. that. That's all of you. That's everybody contributing to the project in various areas, be it development, be it localization, be it QA, be it infrastructure, be it running a conference. And that community consists both of volunteers and ecosystem members. So we have people bringing in their skills with various backgrounds. Some of them do it on a professional level as their, or as a profession, as their day job. Others do it in their spare time. And those contributors, as we also really greatly see here at the conference, they come from around the globe. I think today in, in Peru, we have a Spanish summit um, with people from, from all Spanish speaking countries. We have a strong Asian community. So it's really all around the globe. Then on the bottom of LibreOffice, on the uh, title screen and the logo, it, it literally is the foundation, is TDF, the document foundation. That is first and foremost a legal entity. It is a so-called Stiftung that basically means a foundation. It's based in Berlin and Germany. And what I'm quoting here is what you see in the statutes. It's, it's the objective, it's the mission of TDF. What, what is TDF all about? And it says the objective of the foundation is the promotion development of office software available for use by anyone. That means several things. First of all, um, promotion is uh, in a sense that we can foster projects in that area. We can hand over resources and funding to contribute to LibreOffice. And we can also directly improve the software. Then what is covered is not LibreOffice itself. LibreOffice is not mentioned in the statutes. We cover the field of office software that of course entails the office productivity software that could entail a mail client that could entail a graphic software but for example a software to create um, music sheets to, to put the notes of a music on, on a paper that likely would not be covered so the frame is rather open but 
on the specific field of office software. And the use by anyone is also important. For example, looking at the number of localizations that we have, it's our aim to, um, to, to, to slim down the digital gap, to remove the digital gap by providing as many localizations as possible so as many people as possible can get LibreOffice. And TDF is not called the LibreOffice Foundation, that is on purpose, because first of all, historically in the beginning, it was just not clear what we said. LibreOffice, would it be OpenOffice Org? Would it be a different name? So we left it open. And second, as you see above, the uh, objective of the foundation is a bit wide ranging. That means we could also do other things. So it's not the LibreOffice Foundation, for example, with the document liberation project these days, we also do have another project hosted that is not so much end user facing, but there are other projects beyond LibreOffice. I think we also host the ODF validator and other bits and pieces. So the name was on purpose. What's the philosophy behind that? So if you look at the history, at the ideas, at the statutes, um, the idea behind TDF is to support the development, to foster both the software and the community. One, to me, doesn't exist without the other. You, we are not just about the software, we're not, not just about the community, they're all together. And how do we do that? We do that, for example, with events like these, bringing people together, sharing the knowledge, enabling them to exchange each other, to, to talk about things. We try to share knowledge via blog postings, via events, via documentation, via mentoring people. And also very important that we've seen it these days where uh, our infra team has done a really fantastic job to keep the conference alive and make it possible that many things also in years where we don't have travel restrictions happen in a virtual space. So we need lots of infrastructure. So TDF is also providing a lot of infrastructure for the community to work on. The idea behind TDF was that we had already been working together in various fields. And we had some shared values, some shared ideals, but that was never formalized. And with all the history that we've seen and rules that were not uh, relevant anymore and so on, we were working on statutes that vouch for those values and ideals that especially were looking for openness, for transparency, and many other bits and pieces. Especially these days, you've seen we have discussions about the ecosystem. So, to clarify, from the beginning, we said that TDF should be independent from one single sponsor. That, of course, does not mean that we're completely disconnected, rather the opposite. It means that there should be no direct dependency on one single and only sponsor. Also here, this is something we've seen before, and that main sponsor then decided uh, things that were not working for us. So one of TDF's goals is to avoid being dependent on one single sponsor. And that happens thanks to the support of many. As said, ecosystem is an important part and uh, we want to have that for contributors, for commercial stakeholders, some ideas, and there is much more in discussion at the moment. We have a certification program that is relevant also for tenders. We see more and more tenders where certified LibreOffice developers are required. We do join development efforts, there are tenders going on. So also here, TDF invests quite some resources into making that happen. Also from the beginning, very important was to lower the entry barriers, to make it much easier to contribute in various fields. You see here the easy hacks, you see Hackfest that cover obviously the area of development. We do mentoring workshops, we have more meetings, we have more documentation, we have fantastic videos that are shared. So this is all part of the mission to lower the entry barriers. And of course, TDF isn't isolated. It works with other entities, with standards bodies, with other free and open source organizations. We try to exchange thoughts, to work on common projects. We're not isolated. We are part of the open source ecosystem and try to reach out to other peers to work together with them. Talking about communities, and I think everybody has their very own definition of that. But this is one that I like quite a lot. So what is, what is a community? Um, to me, it means we enjoy working together on something. Of course, not every day is perfect and wonderful and, and pure joy. But in the end, you, like always in life, you need to like what you do. 
if you're not happy with what you do, then it's likely not going to work out. So this is an important bit. An integral part of a community to me is working with shared interests. We have common goals. We have common ideals that we share. And of course, especially in a project like ours, especially in the early days, it was very important to have some interest and excitement to be open for a bit of an adventure. It was all new. And with developments taking place, things changing, of course, this is a key part also today. Of course, we make mistakes. We make them regularly, and, and that's good. Nobody is perfect. We, we need to make mistakes. We need to learn from these. And then we need to share the knowledge to avoid anybody else making them again. So that's a normal process that happens with TDF as well. And that's a, a big part of um, community work, also finding things out. Not every little mistake is already a giant failure. And as such, you can only improve. Then it's important both for us who are already in the project as well as for people who'd like to get in. We need to find out what their best is. What, what is their skill? My favorite sample is we had a, a doctor many years ago and he was contributing in the field of design. He was a designer, so that was not related at all to his, uh, to his main daily job. But he was working as a designer and supporting us in that area while in his day job he was working in the medical area. So find out where people can contribute, where they're good at, where are their skills, and try to involve them as much as possible. Then we can only motivate others if we are motivated. And this is a key part of the work, motivate others. Motivate others and get them in. Coordination is key as well, especially these days we see we are all uh, disconnected, we are all not uh, in, in one room, we need to coordinate. It's sometimes a bit chaotic, but in the end it works out quite well. And important, what comes out of that joint efforts is something that everybody benefits from. It's not just us taking what we did, but we share it with everybody. Everybody benefits from that. And of course, like, like in any human interaction, um, tensions, they are normal, they happen, but usually they're quite well solvable. So, that is maybe an, an important message also to, to share. Let's talk a bit about the foundation itself. What is TDF, what is the foundation? We went for a foundation because we, especially in light of the history that we had seen, we wanted to have something that is enduring and that is stable, that provides stability. We came from times that were really complicated, that were really unclear, so we wanted something that is stable. Important for us was that the main objective of TDF cannot be changed. So that the part that you read before the, the um, office software, that is important for us. We know where we're contributing to, what we're contributing to, and in other entities, you could change that in theory. For several entities, you could say, oh, uh, right, uh, I now move from uh, open standards and free software to proprietary software and closed standards would be possible. And we wanted something that is a bit more guaranteed. And as such, we wanted to provide safety for the commit, for the end users and the ecosystems. So all participants in the project. TDF itself acts as some sort of trustee, for example, for the trademarks and for the domains. We do handle donations, we manage budgets, but TDF is not a part of the commercial ecosystem itself. That means you cannot buy anything at TDF. You cannot get a license, you cannot get consultancy, we don't do migrations for you. That's what we have the commercial ecosystem for. So TDF acts as some sort of gateway, but it's not directly a participant of the commercial ecosystem. With all that setup, we wanted to guarantee rights for all the participants. So from the creators to the consumers, we wanted to guarantee rights to all of them. So how is TDF set up? TDF, like any other entity, has a board of directors, the legal representative. And that board of directors already is a pretty good representation of the community because we have people from various countries with various backgrounds. We have people working in that field professionally. We have people doing it as a pure hobby, people in the IT sector, people doing something completely different. So it's a fairly good representation. We can always improve, but the representation per se is not so bad. And in the board of directors, the, the board can be elected for a term of two years and can be re-elected. And it's 
nine people in total. The active and passive electoral right is with the so-called board of trustees, the members of TDF. And that is currently 221 individuals who are distributed around the world and work on the foundation's goals. And the idea behind that is when you have been active in the community for like three months and you plan six more, it's, it's not a, a legal contract you enter, but it's like you aim to contribute at least six more months, then you are a member for one year and you can re-qualify, you can renew your membership after it's expired. And that is overseen by the membership committee consisting of nine people with a similar setup, also a term of two years. And also for that one, the passive and active electoral right is with the board of trustees. The idea behind that is that anyone who contributes for whatever reason, if it's as a pure volunteer or if you are paid, it doesn't matter. You can get into the steering of TDF, you can help shape TDF, and we ensure that only people who actively contribute, again, for whatever reason, are in, in uh, the controlling position. And that membership is always individually. That means even if you leave the company for whom you've been working on LibreOffice, you will keep that if you contribute. And we have another part of TDF that is not a formal body, that is the so-called advisory board. The membership there is based for, or is, is um, intended for organizations and companies. And maybe important to mention in the board of trustees, donations do not qualify. You cannot buy yourself in. So any other work that you do can help, but not money. And just a quick overview, and I'm, I'm not reading that out in detail. This is just a very brief overview of the options. It, it's not a conclusive list on how you can get engaged in, in TDF and what could qualify for membership. That is infrastructure, marketing, localization, quality assurance, development, templates and extensions, and so on and so on. So a really wide range, there is basically no limit, but again, donations do not qualify. So you cannot buy yourself in, you must personally do something to bring the objective of the foundation forward. So how did TDF happen? How did that take place? That is 10 years ago, so uh, we, we have something to celebrate. As you all know, the LibreOffice project was founded in the September of 2010. And TDF itself is a bit younger. It was set up in February 2012. The reason is that we took quite some time to work on the, the bylaws, the statutes, the ideas. We started collecting how a governance should look like. Then when it became clear where TDF would be set up, we were working for, for many, many months to carve out statutes, to carefully work on that. To uh, We had various iterations amongst the founders group, how that should look like. Uh, we were in the process of approval because foundations have to be approved. And that took many, many months to make it finally happen. So we spent quite some, some care into all the regulations. And we were evaluating a couple of countries. I remember the UK, I remember France, Italy, Germany. And in the end, we had a couple of reasons why we went for Germany. First of all, that mentioned stability and guarantees was one of the central aspects also coming from the history that we had seen. And plus, it needs people to do the job. So we had uh, quite a few people looking in various options. Like, I think Italo was looking for the Italian option. That's what I remember. Um, then some people were looking into the German option. I think with Sophie, we were working on an option in France. And so we, we were looking for countries where we had people on site. And after a careful consideration and going through various options, in the end, settled them for Germany. There was just one problem because we knew, okay, we want to go to Germany. We had an idea how the statute should look like. We had an idea of the governance, but we needed funding and didn't have it. So we, we had a, a, some a sponsors supporting us. We had another association helping us, but in the end we needed money and we needed trademarks, domain names and all that. So apart from all the volunteer time that were spent into that and, and quite some great development efforts taking place. There was things we just had to buy. We didn't have the money. So what we did is what you these days would likely call crowdfunding. We started a public fundraiser. And the idea was, let's see for a month if we can get the money. If not, we need to reevaluate the plan. 
our goal was 50,000 euro capital. And that took us exactly eight days to get from donors. And it was really small donations from all around the globe. And that is reflected by today because the average donation, I think, is around 13, 14 euro. So it's many, many small people in terms of the financial input, not about the volunteer time, not about the development contributions, but in terms of donations, many, many small donations that come in. And that's what we've seen in the beginning. And after the month that we had foreseen, we ended up with 50,000 euro capital and another 40,000 euro on top, which put us in a pretty comfortable situation to start running servers, uh, infrastructure, setting up required bits and pieces. It was really an incredible experience to see so strong support because apart from the, from the money that we had, it's an expression of support. And that was really great to see so many also individual people supporting the idea that we came up with. Some special things at TDF that up to today, I think are really important and that I, I'm, I'm really happy we have that we put into the statutes. It's first of all, a one third rule to prevent conflict of interest. And that means in any given body of TDF, um, only one third of the members can be with the same affiliation. That means you cannot have a board with the same company or with the same organization just to provide the conflict of interest. Then we strongly, as said before, vouch for openness and transparency. That means per default, all of our board meetings are public. You can find the link here. Per default, all decisions of the bodies are public. You can find the link here. Even our accounting is public. Of course, it's anonymized. So you don't see who donated which sum, but you see where the money comes from, how it is spent. We take the official ledgers, translate them, so it's available in English and it's public. And also the board's mailing list is per default public. And whoever had a look at the board discuss list the last weeks, you see there's quite some messages going on. Of course, there's a requirement for transparency. You need to talk things through also sometimes in private. That is reflected in the statutes because there is the option, as long as there is a confidentiality requirement, it can be kept confidential. The classics are you have a marketing campaign planned, you have a legal topic pending, you have discussions about staff members. That is something that at least in first place, you likely don't do in public you will do in private and at least those bits and pieces that then don't have a confidentiality requirement anymore have to be made public and transparent as per the standards. One thing where we turned our legal obligation into a benefit actually is the annual report because one of the requirements for foundations and that I think is not so much different from many corporate setups where you also have strong reporting duties is that we need to provide an annual report about all the activities that we have done. And that is jointly written with the community. We have to file it in German, but the way we work on it is we draft it in English, the board approves it in English, and then in parallel we translate it into German. And in parallel we have this nice, uh, you see the nice thumbnail here, a layouted and design version of that that is available for download that we hand out also on printed paper. And we do that since 2016 or so in that form. So here you have two links, but on the Document Foundation Org website, you find some links to the ledgers, you find some links to the previous annual reports. And that is a, quite, a, quite a, a good thing to make transparent what is happening to show what people are doing to outline how TDF is fulfilling its mission. And I think it's a, it's a very important and very, very good thing to have. Yeah, and um, one of the pictures I want to show you is, I, I really like it. It's from Brno in 2016. It's various community members waving their hands. We were all gathering at an in-person conference in Brno in, I think, September, meeting, talking things through. And this is not the full audience there, not the full list of attendees, but it shows people working together, having fun, uh, jointly working on uh, a common goal and um, 
the message is we are a, a worldwide community, we are a, we are a fun community, you should really consider working here, you should really consider contributing here. Uh, it's fun and uh, especially these days when we when we saw that an in-person meeting is not possible. I'm, I'm really happy to, uh, to discover um, how we managed to still to still uh, meet and uh, do something together and that is that is really good and just before closing it then I'm, I'm happy to answer a couple of questions see a couple of people raising their hand I, I just want to add some some personal words now that we are really in the 10th anniversary of LibreOffice and you see discussion on TDF and so on so I think that after working together for 10 years, we clearly see that things are in discussion. But on one hand, it does not come entirely unexpected that if you work together such a long time, people have heavily invested time or money or both. And in any case, they invested much passion into what they do. And especially during a year that is as challenging as this one is for all of us in so many aspects, that we spot after that long time many things that we need to work on together. And uh, especially this conference has shown me one thing very clearly, and that is indeed that despite all the social distancing that at the moment we are forced to keep, here we clearly see and feel this community spirit. I'm, I'm really, uh, I have the feeling of being with all of you despite all the technical issues that we've seen and despite all the bits and pieces that uh, were happening. And we see people from all around the globe meeting here during a virtual conference, sharing what they do, show their projects, present their achievements. And um, I think as weird as it sounds, in some comforting way, we somehow all feel more closer maybe uh, in these days than we did during previous conferences when we are taking things for granted. So just as a, as a closing statement after 10 years of LibreOffice and uh, nearly nine years of TDF. I'm looking forward to make TDF a success with all of you also during the next decade. This is something we only can achieve together. And uh, we can only do that in the spirit that it was set up. And this is by the community and this is for the community, including everybody who works here on a common goal. It doesn't matter where they live, what their language is, what their time is on, what their profession is, if they're volunteers, if they're ecosystem members, it doesn't matter. I think we all need to work together on, on one joint and common goal. And we had our first 10 years and I'm very much looking forward to the next 10 years. So. Um. Florian, one thing I, I would mention as well is, um, I think most people in the, uh, in the room here, no, but um, the Wacken Foundation itself is actually quite small. There are only 11 of us um, working for it. Um, and I noticed this recently when we posted about the TDF team on Reddit and um, other places. A lot of people were surprised. They thought TDF was like 100 people, a big software house. Um, so uh, I think that that's um, something else that, that's often worth mentioning as well, and that's because we're at the core, um, we're, we're not a software house ourselves and, and we're, we're a small, close-knit team. Indeed, and the TDF itself has only a few people employed. It's a, it's a team of 11 people in total. That's the, the core team hosted at TDF, but we have many, many more volunteers. We have many more contributions from others, but indeed TDF is not, not a big company. As said in the beginning, we are not, selling something we are not uh, providing services ourselves we are really a, a small team working on the core aspects and one of the main tasks is really to enable the community to do things that is i'd say the the main task to to deal with some of course administrative and maybe more boring things but especially enabling the community providing platforms offering this this meeting meeting venue that we see here and um this is the, the, the key thing. It's not on us to fix bugs, to, to develop the code. That, that That's not the TDF core team doing. We, we really to try to provide a framework and enable people to do something. This is what at least I see as, as our mission. 
Also, you mentioned a few people putting their hands up, but uh, that was that was because I, when um, when you posted the picture at the end of your talk, Florian, of the um, Bruno event, I wrote in the chat, put your hands up if you can see yourself in the picture. So, <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people raised their hands. It didn't mean they wanted to jump in and talk, but um, just show that they were there. Indeed. It, it reminds me just of one last story, if people have two more minutes. It reminds me of many, many years ago. I think it was in Oviedo in 2009, where we had uh, Germany Christo with us, who, as all of you know, passed away nearly five years ago. And uh, at the closing ceremony, he wanted to highlight how diverse and wide ranging the community is. And he asked everybody to sit and then he was calling. So let's please all the developers stand up and then let's please all the marketeers stand up, all the localizers. We went through all the bits and pieces was uh, a couple of groups he was mentioning. And in the end, there was nobody sitting on their, on their chair anymore because everybody was part of at least one group. And I, I still remember that pretty well. And it was a nice experience for the closing session. Thanks, Lauren. If, um, if there are any more questions or discussion points, um, we can talk about them in the chat. Otherwise, I think we have a half hour break now. Let me check the schedule. Yeah, yeah we have so. 12 half UTC hour. should continue. Exactly. Yeah, 12 UTC. Uh, we have there are talks um, about um, online and mobile from the LibreOffice side and micro OS on the OpenSUSE side as well. Um, and of course, the um, the conf underscore chat room is always available for a coffee um, to catch up with some people as well, chat about other topics. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Florian. And, thanks uh, a lot. Thanks for moderating and welcome. have a nice break. See you, everybody. Bye bye.